Welcome to Zero Knowledge. I'm your host, Anna Rose. In this podcast, we will be exploring the latest in zero knowledge research and the decentralized web, as well as new paradigms that promise to change the way we interact and transact online. This week, I'm doing an episode all about ZK Hack, another project that I'm involved in. You've definitely heard me mention it on the show before, and we wanted to share a little bit more about what it is. So ZK Hack is a project we kicked off in 2021. It's separate from this podcast. It's got a different company and partially a different team. And it started as an online event, but has since become an educational hub. For the first part of this episode, Kobe and I share more details about the history of ZK Hack, how it evolved, and what kinds of things are happening in the ZK Hack ecosystem today. We just recently wrapped up ZK Hack 4 online, our four-week event, and so we also share a little bit about how that went. In the second half of the episode, Nico and I do mini interviews with our top three ZK hackers, the folks who competed in our puzzle hacking competition and won. We've always heard that our ZK hack puzzles are pretty challenging, but according to these winners, it seems they were easier than we thought. And this was really surprising to hear. We did also learn that all of our winners are experts in CTFs, so maybe there's a connection there. Anyway, it was really fun to hear from them about what it was like to hack on our puzzles, what their favorite puzzles were, and how we could make these even better next time. So yeah, join us as we dive into the ZK hack world. Now, before we kick off, I would love to point you to the ZK jobs board. We are getting amazing job postings there from top teams working in ZK. So if you're looking for a new job and want to work with the best in the field, be sure to check it out. Also, if you're a company looking to hire, you can post your jobs on the ZK Jobs Board as well. I've added the link in the show notes. Be sure to check it out. Now, Tanya will share a little bit about this week's sponsor. Alio is a new layer one blockchain that achieves the programmability of Ethereum, the privacy of Zcash, and the scalability of a rollup. Driven by a mission for a truly secure internet, Alio has interwoven zero-knowledge proofs into every facet of their stack, resulting in a vertically integrated Layer 1 blockchain that's unparalleled in its approach. Alio is ZK by design. Dive into their programming language Leo and see what permissionless development looks like, offering boundless opportunities for developers and innovators to build ZK apps. This is an invitation to be part of a transformational ZK journey. Dive deeper and discover more about Alio at alio.org. And now here's our episode. So to start this episode off, um, I'm here with Kobe Gherkin. Hey, Kobe, how's it going? Hello, I'm good. Our goal with this episode is really to revisit sort of the ZK Hack project and focus in on ZK Hack 4, an event we just recently wrapped up. And we're going to be later on in the episode interviewing the winners of the ZK Hack puzzle hacking competition. But yeah, I think what we wanted to do to start it off was just to give a bit of a framing for this project, for ZK Hack, and also the puzzles. Often people kind of confuse this podcast, the Zero Knowledge podcast, with ZK Hack, but they're two different companies. And actually, I'd say they're really developing as two different teams, two different communities. And I want to do a little sort of revisit of what we had come up with originally. You and me, Kobe, we we first developed ZK Hack in 2021. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I want to talk a little bit about how that's evolved. Do you remember when we first kicked this off? Yeah. So I remember we were talking about doing some kind of hackathon or in-person event that, that would be around the people using ZK. Um, but back then, you know, we had global challenges. Uh, <laughs> True. Um, yeah, and that that we wasn't really. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't really an option, or maybe not a favorable option. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I shared with you that I had this desire to to do online hacking competitions around cryptography and zk, and um, with the goal of having people learning. And I think that's when we started thinking about ZK Hack seriously. Mm. And yeah, back then, I, I don't even think it was only the fact that we couldn't travel to do an IRL hackathon. I always think of it like, even though there were tools, I really don't think a hackathon would have been that productive at that point. Like, I don't know if people You're could right. have really built that much. Yeah, the, the tooling has evolved very significantly since then. I agree. Yeah. 
So back then we started off with a seven week event. Kobe had, you had this idea of doing these puzzle competitions, a bit CTF like, Mm -hmm. and the way we mapped out the event was to have one workshop every week. So like every Tuesday we were meeting for workshop. And then in between that, we would run this puzzle hacking competition for one puzzle. And so overall we did seven weeks of workshops and in between six puzzles. And it was quite a feat. (laughs) It was pretty (laughs) intense. (laughs) Yeah. And I know that like at the end of that, our team was pretty tired. We actually recorded an episode so that I'm going to find this, dig this up and add it in the show notes. But that was after the first ZK hack event. Um, the reason we wanted to do a, an event like a, a podcast at the time was, you know, this was the first time we had done it. It gave us a chance to showcase some of the winners and, and say thanks to the team. Since then, I don't think I've really covered ZK hack on the show mm-hmm. when I think about it. Um, so this is a bit of a revisit to the project. Uh, and because we just wrapped up our fourth online event, I thought it would be kind of a good time to do that. Completely agree. So I want to talk a bit about what ZK Hack has evolved into. People might know it as a hackathon series, or they might know it as an online puzzle hacking competition. Um, but it's actually like a full ecosystem of of things, channels. We do all sorts of things over at ZK Hack. I know that in the first kind of intro talk for ZK Hack 4, I actually shared a graphic, which was like a map of all of the different things. And I'll try to dig that up and and obviously add a link to those videos to the show notes. Um, But I also wanted to just cover it here because I think people might have heard about some sort of content with ZK Hack in the title. And so I just want to kind of map it out for everyone. So the way we think of ZK Hack is almost like a website as a hub. So if you go to the zkhack.dev website, you can see a lot of the things that we're doing. We also have a Discord that's super active. So from the website, you can find links to the YouTube playlist, to our Twitter account, to the blog. You can see previous puzzles. ZK Mesh, which is a monthly newsletter, something that I I think that started like over two years ago. That is now under the ZK Hack umbrella. So if you're looking for a place to just get updates about the latest research, we send this out once a month. You can find that over on the zkhack.dev website. You can find the link to sign up for ZK Mesh. ZK Hack is also the team that built the ZK Whiteboard Sessions. So this was this like educational multi-part video series. And so I don't know if you've heard me mention that on the show. I think probably I have over the years mentioned that. I think that series really helped me to understand the actual fundamental building blocks of ZKPs. Even though I'd been talking about them for years and interviewing these researchers, I never really got a real sense for it until I watched those ZK whiteboard sessions closely. And then on the Discord side of ZK Hack. Like over in the Discord, we do things like we we have study groups about all sorts of different content pieces. So for example, there is a study group running right now looking at the ZK whiteboard sessions. So what they do is they watch a video and then every week there's a small group of people who get together and meet and talk about it and figure out, you know, what did they understand well? What did they not understand well? And then they'll bring in kind of more expert people to help them navigate that. Uh, Justin Thaler has been running a study group over in the ZK Hack Discord since the end of 2021, at least. Um, yeah. And he's run through three cohorts of the study group. And so in that, he goes over the book that he had written. And it's kind of a living document that he updates. And he runs these study groups. And then kind of from the feedback of the people doing these study groups has changed and evolved the content. Just recently, a team, uh, like a group of people wrapped up the Moon Math Manual study group, which was like the longest single one, I think. It was like over six months. Um, That was very cool. Yeah. And we've done some other ones as well. That's actually a place anyone listening, if you're like interested in joining a study group, definitely head over to the ZK Hack Discord. But also, you might want to run your own study group. If you have a piece of content you're really into, you think people would like to learn along with you and it's on topic. This is something you could bring up in there too. So I would like to add a few words on the study groups. Sure. I think that's one of the coolest things that came out of ZK Hack. They cover both fundamental topics and pretty advanced topics as well. The Thaler book is very extensive and goes into details that 
you don't usually see in the industry. So it's really cool to, to learn all of that. And maybe to clarify to people that hasn't seen how a study group is run, it's run pretty professionally, even though it's run by volunteers and people that are around in Discord. You have weekly sessions sometimes and you run through a series of some kind, a structured program and people are very welcoming and collaborative and there are exercises. It's really worth the effort if you want to get much more into ZK or advanced cryptography. I would mm. definitely recommend. And yeah, I, I'm also pretty happy about the ZK whiteboard sessions that you, you, know, you, you led because I've seen people refer to it as, as one of their favorite resources to, to catch up on the most interesting and fundamental parts of the snark world. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I would recommend anyone to at least check them out. Yeah, maybe some context on that too. The Z I know I already mentioned the ZK whiteboard sessions, but I forgot to mention that the first three modules, so the first three videos are actually, they're from Dan Bonet from Stanford. And he created this sort of mini course on what a ZKP is sort of on the, on the computer science level. I think what we found in this whole space is that you have these very high level explanations. So you have like the yeah. where's Waldo or billiard ball explanations of zero knowledge proofs. And then you have the papers, which are super dense and hard to follow. And I, I feel like slowly and surely the middle is being filled in yeah. with new pieces of content courses. I know like there's been lots of teams that have tried to get some sort of cohort to like onboard more people. And I think we're getting there. But yes, ZK, ZK Whiteboard Sessions is one of those. Yeah, just to, just to continue on that study group topic, though, those are also, they are run by volunteers in the community, like you mentioned. And what we find with those is often there's like kind of a pile on at the beginning. Like you'll have like a hundred people be like, yes, I want to be in the study group. And then it definitely goes down over time. But what's yeah. cool is the people who are there at the end often really know each other. Like they've been meeting weekly. They might then get to meet up in person sometime. And I think it's a cool way to find like obviously fellow learners to learn along with you, but also maybe future collaborators, co-founders, something like that. Yeah. And the last thing I want to cover though on ZK Hack, sort of the larger ecosystem is the events. As part of ZK Hack, we've done two hackathons. Those are IRL hackathons. So this was ZK Hack Lisbon and ZK Hack Istanbul. Anyone who was at those events or around those events maybe heard about them. So those were our, you know, first foray into the actual IRL hackathon land. But before we did the IRL hackathons, we had actually been running these online events. And as mentioned kind of earlier, that was what first started the ZK Hack project, this like online event. It's a very unique format. Um, and we've actually done four of them now. So the one we did back in 2021, end of 2021, ZK Hack 1 ran seven weeks. ZK Hack 2, or ZK Hack Mini, ran, I think, in March 2022. And that was a really short one. I think we only did three weeks. And then we found our sweet, our sweet spot with ZK Hack 3, which we ran in November 2022. And for that one, we did four weeks with three puzzles. And I think that's now kind of our format because it's perfect. It's a, it's a really good amount of time for people to get to know each other in the community, but not so long that there's like an exhaustion. Um, mm -hmm. I think our team also really likes that it's, you know, four weeks and we can keep the energy up. I think if it's, if it's just four weeks. And so what we wanted to talk about even in more depth today is ZK Hack 4, which was our most recent online event. So we ran this from January 16th until February 6th. We were meeting weekly. The way we would do this is often we have our kickoff at the very beginning. And after that first session, we kick off puzzle one. One week goes by. We have one of our partners do their workshop presentation. And this time around, our partners were Risk Zero and Polygon. So that second week session was with Risk Zero. Uh, they did their workshop. And then at the end of that workshop, we kicked off puzzle two. Polygon presented the week after. After that, we kicked off puzzle three, and then our final session was a panel, at which point we kind of concluded the event and shared all of the, 
the winners and prizes. And yeah, kind of we could see then how the hackers had performed. So yeah, now I want to talk a bit about this because Kobe, for this time, you've actually been behind most of the puzzles for most of ZK Hack, I would say, at least like in terms of the vision for what it's going to be. We've had yeah. sort of partners to build them at times. This time around, though, we wanted to do it with geometry research. So maybe can you share a little bit about what your thinking was for ZK Hack 4, maybe how that compares to the previous puzzles and what it was like to build them? Yeah, for sure. Happily. So for ZK Hack 4, what the, the theme that we had in mind uh, was what can go wrong when you try to write security proofs by hand waving it mm -hmm. and just kind of collect references and say, this was done there a bit differently. This was done here a bit differently. And if you take all of this together yeah. and write it very convincingly, maybe you have a secure system. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that doesn't always work. And that was the, the theme that we had. Is this kind of like, I'm trying to imagine how this happens. So like you have these different pieces, each have been proven, mm -hmm. have been like, there's some security proof. Everyone feels confident about using them, but is it in the gluing them together that you make the mistakes? So it might be in the gluing them together. That was one of the puzzles that we had. And other cases would be that you don't really look into the properties that you really need from the primitives that you're using, for example, elliptic curves, and just saying, okay, I have an elliptic curve here and I have an elliptic curve here, so they're interchangeable, but that's not always true. Mm. And that's another puzzle that we had. Nice. If you look at previous ZK hack puzzles, um, you might notice that they were also touching around these kind of topics. So we had this hash to curve puzzle where the random oracle wasn't good and so on. But in previous puzzles, we didn't focus very heavily on the security proof part where you were just presented with some implementation and a broken protocol and you would have to hack it and create false proofs and so on. But here we really try to, to make it convincing that these protocols are secure, but they are not. So that, that was kind of a change in, in the theme. And mm. I think it, it was pretty fun to create those. It's pretty fun to, to see how to do proof by convincing and how it doesn't really work all the time. This time around, you used ArcWorks as kind of the language of the puzzle, but I know there was a time where you used a different language, I think, right? It hasn't always been ArcWorks. True. Very true. We indeed used ArcWorks for a lot of the ZK Hack puzzles, and also this time in ZK Hack 4, and because it's pretty flexible, very configurable, you can use many different kinds of elliptic curves, and you can use it for snark work, you can use it for general advanced cryptography, so BLS signatures and stuff like that. Um, but in ZK Hack Mini, we've used Winterfell, mm. which is from the Polygon team, because there we wanted to focus on Starks and Fry. And we had some broken airs and we had really explanatory puzzle around how to hack fry if you have too few queries. So that that's why we used Winterfell that time. Um, but still, I believe that almost every puzzle, if not all of them, used Rust. So that's something that we didn't change. Mm. But I wonder, would it be possible to do puzzles with like the other ZK DSLs? Or is there certain characteristics that you kind of need in this language to be able to showcase the problems with the snarks, basically That's the bugs. That's a great question. Yeah, so I believe that you could make interesting puzzles even with DSLs. So you can make, you know, broken circuits in Circom, Noir, and so on. Mm. But what you might not be able to do easily is change the internals. Mm. So what we're trying to do in ZK Hack usually is some self-contained piece of advanced cryptography. And, you know, a broken circuit is one kind, which is cool. But 
it's also something that people may encounter in their day to day, but encountering the deeper parts that usually don't think about in cryptographic primitives and what's behind the ZK DSLs, that might be hard if you want to do it with an existing DSL. Hmm. That's that's my intuition. Yeah. I almost wonder if you were to use like a ZK DSL too, aren't you like creating the bug? I almost start to think it, it borders on like a bounty for the ZK DSL itself. <laughs> <laughs> like what if you find a problem in the... <laughs> yeah, I guess that's you could a problem. find that anywhere, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, for example, one thing that we published a while ago um, in, in the Geometry blog was around Growth 16 malleability. Mm. And there, in order to showcase the kind of problem that you can have, where, where we focused on public inputs that are not really used in the circuits and how you can change them and so on, there we really had to go into Snark.js and change its internals in order to show some problem. Oh, wow. And that that feels like not the best fit in ZK Hack because yeah. we want something that is self-contained and educational. Mm. That makes sense. So you just kind of mentioned, though, this work at Geometry Research. I, I feel like Nico came on the show a few weeks ago and we did the ZK Jargon Decoder and he kind of mentioned Geometry Research, mm -hmm. but I know we've been wanting to introduce it. It's kind of a new player, somewhat, like it's sort of like a, a new player <laughs> in the field. And Kobe, you're an often co-host on this show. People know you really well. So why don't we do like take a minute just to talk about Geometry Research, who were for this edition of ZK Hack for the partner. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so Geometry Research is a company that works on interesting cryptography projects in general. <laughs> if, if I could put it in the way that is, uh, that is most exciting. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit of history around Geometry, which was a combination of an investor and, and a research group. Mm -hmm. What we did uh, three months ago, we spun off the research group into its own thing. Mm. And that's what Geometry Research is. And so together with uh, Nico, Andrea, Weje, and Yingtong, uh, we created Geometry Research. We have a few themes that we really like that we think will be important for the industry um, either in 2024 or, or moving forward. And we collaborate with, with uh, companies and projects that are also aligned with the topics that we like. Mm. And so a couple of topics that we really like are around identity and, and cryptographic primitive acceleration. And we engage with, with these companies to build meaningful projects around these topics mm. and release them to, to the public and create something that that is unique and utilizes what we can do best at geometry research. I know when you were developing geometry research, you were talking about potentially doing like audits. Do you guys also do that? Do you do like security checks on some of the stuff that exists or are you, mo are you mostly building? No, yeah, completely. Uh, we also have some um, good expertise in in looking into in the internals of protocols. Mm. So we also do security audits. We just finished one a couple of weeks ago, uh, by the way. Cool. And yes, so we, we collaborate with projects in different ways. Either we do these bigger projects that the result of them is something uh, new and unique that you can deploy, or that we do research that gets published as papers or technical reports, or that we also do security audits and make sure that things are working well. Are there any teams you can already mention you work with? Um, not yet publicly, okay. but soon. Okay. Uh, I promise that uh, we will share <laughs> much more soon. Cool. But uh, yeah, if if anyone wants to learn more or and and see what are the things that we're interested in or see how to collaborate, I'll be more than happy to talk to to anyone that wants to. Cool. How then do the puzzles fit in? Like you know, we're partnering on this. Yes. You're one of the co-creators of ZK Hack generally, but yeah, how does like geometry working on puzzles for ZK Hack? How is that kind of part of this? 
Yeah, so I think it fits very nicely into both the fact that we're building new protocols. And so what happens in ZK hack puzzles is people sometimes building new protocols that are broken. So we're trying to, or this is a way to show maybe how, what is the wrong way to build new <laughs> protocols? <laughs> and that, yeah, we don't do it like that yeah. in, in geometry research. Uh, but also it ties into the fact that we're rethinking about the internals of cryptography a lot of time. Like that's something that all of the team enjoys. That, that also ties in into us sharing some of the insights that we had when we're working on projects, yeah. that when we're learning about protocols. And we feel like we sometimes try to change stuff and see, and see how it would affect the, the project mm -hmm. and so on. And we then have some, some learnings there as to how things can go horribly wrong when you do that. <laughs> and that's something that we like to share. Like nice. we, we do that even beyond the puzzles, we write posts and all yeah, that. Yeah. So that's also something that kind of ties in very nicely. That's cool. I, j I was just thinking as you're saying this too, like in ZK Hack, we have these two events that we're doing, right? We do the online events, which are about the bugs in the protocols, and you're supposed to break ZK. And then we have the ZK Hack IRL hackathons, mm -hmm. which are about building with yeah. ZK. It's not like the hackathons aren't really about like building protocol level stuff although there's always teams that do where they're like doing it like an implementation they're like actually adding to the libraries that like power zk could we ever do like a puzzle that is actually about like the application level of zk yeah i think in some sense we already do that but that's true that it's it's rare that the puzzle is really about an end-to-end -end application mm. oh but one of the puzzles did do that yeah I think like in some of the puzzles, for example, in, in puzzle one, in ZK Hack 4, yeah. you were already talking about a potential a private transfer oh, or private, nice. uh, private payment application. And we showed how to break something that is more, you know, it's still in the protocol level, but it's something that is tied to very concretely to the application and how it's deployed. Oh, wow. But yeah, it would be interesting to also see how the environment affects the security of the application. So not only the circuit, not mm -hmm. only the cryptography, but also the way that it integrates maybe into the blockchain verifier or even the JavaScript library that communicates with it. That could be really interesting, actually. Neat. Yeah, maybe for the next one. Yeah. I think the current cadence for the online events seems to be one a year. It is quite a lot of work for our team to produce it because it's this multi-week event. We often like to do it in the winter, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, because a lot of people are traveling less. A lot of people are sitting at their desk and so that they can join us for this online thing. But I think, yeah, look out for next year. We'll probably do it again. In the, it, it will either be late this year or early next year where we do another one. I want to just sort of wrap up on ZK Hack 4. We're going to be hearing from some of the winners who actually you know, went through the process of trying to break these things that Kobe had set up <laughs> and solve <laughs> these problems. Well, it wasn't only me. Okay. We, we had a bunch of people helping. So Andrea has been very pivotal in making the puzzles and also thinking about the potential hacks. And the rest of the team also, also helped with some uh, advice or ideas. And in one of the puzzles, we also got help from Mary Meller, nice. which was... She, she can come up with very devious, convincing <laughs> protocols. And uh, yeah, she did. And that helped us design one of the puzzles. So that cool. was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, when we wrapped up, so our last session was February 6th. We did the wrap up. We kind of announced all the prize winners. What was kind of nice there was a lot of the top 10 or top 15 there's like familiar faces in there. There's people who've been coming back every single year to do these ZK hacks, but there's also some new folks. So congrats to everybody who, who tried their hand at this. And obviously, especially congrats to those who ranked. 
Um, usually those who ranked would have had to have done all three puzzles in a pretty timely fashion. Uh, I think this time around we had almost 60 participants in the puzzle hacking. Yeah. And the thing is like, this is, this is hard. This is like very advanced. A lot of those people who are ranking are people who work in ZK companies, you know, like they're, they're not really so much armchair enthusiasts, but really kind of like already working in the field. (laughs) Um, But I know every once in a while we also get folks who are new to the space trying out these puzzles. So it's very cool. Yeah. We meet really good people Yeah, or yeah, really smart people through this competition. So that's cool. Yeah. So just, I want to kind of do a quick roundup of everyone who made this happen. Um, on our team, on the ZK Hack side, we had Agni, who's running events. We had Gaylord, who's recently joined the ZK Hack team. And he was really helpful behind the scenes with the website and tracking all of these winners. Kobe, your team. Hector helped us on marketing for the event. And Rachel also helped us with some of the admin behind the scenes. So thanks to the whole ZK Hack team. Uh, it was so great to get a chance to do this again with everyone. So I think this gives everyone a good description of this event and the whole ZK Hack ecosystem. I do want to shout out two upcoming things that are happening in the ZK Hack world to look out for. There is a new series of ZK Hack meetups. So these are, you know, short one, two hour meetups in pretty casual, small settings. We've hosted two so far. We've done ZK Hack Lisbon and ZK Hack London, and we're going to be hosting one in Athens around ZK Summit. And we have one planned for Berlin later this year as well. So we're looking to kind of like move ZK Hack all around the world to actually get to meet fellow hackers in different cities. And we also have our upcoming IRL hackathon, ZK Hack Krakow. So we announced this in the event that's going to be happening May 17th through 19th in Krakow. And that's the week before ETH Berlin and the Berlin Blockchain Week. And even though Krakow and Berlin are not that close to each other, they're not that far either. So if you're planning on coming over for Berlin, you might want to also check out ZK Krakow the week before. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good summary of the things going on in ZK Hack. Cool. Thanks, Kobe, for sharing with us the story of geometry and also all of your thinking around how to develop these puzzles. A pleasure always. Cool. All right. Next up, we're going to be hearing from the winners of ZK Hack 4. And yeah, who are the hackers who were able to figure out these incredibly challenging puzzles so fast? Nico and I are here with our third place winner of ZK Hack 4, Priyansh. Welcome to the show, Priyansh. Hi, Anna. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, It's my first podcast. I'm kind of nervous, but yeah. Oh, don't be nervous. I mean, you're here because you won something. So yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, Nico. Hey, Anna. Hey, Priyansh. So Priyansh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What have you been working on? Yeah. So hi, everybody. I am Priyansh. I'm an undergraduate engineering student from India. And I'm currently in my final year and I'm just working on my bachelor's thesis right now. Um, And the thesis that I'm working on focuses on applying zero knowledge to like the domain of electronics. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Cool. I have a question for you. Was this the first time you participated in the ZK Hack online competition? Yes. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. How did you find out about it? Yeah, so actually, like before this, I was kind of doing a boot camp. So there was like a zero knowledge cryptography boot camp by Lambda class. And mm. I think there somebody like told us that, you know, ZK Hack is going to start in like two weeks. So you guys can go and register. So I just found out about ZK Hack from there. Yeah. Nice. Was that your first contact with cryptography and zero knowledge? Uh, yeah, not really. So actually, I've been like interested in cryptography like since my like freshman year in college, and then I'm like have been pursuing like cryptographic primitives, and then just like the previous year, uh, I came to know about zero knowledge, and I've been just diving into it from then. Amazing. Yeah. I want to know if you've done CTFs in your past because yes, this I've is done. you have okay yeah, I've done a lot of them. <laughs> How did ZK Hack puzzles actually compare to the CTFs you did in the past? Like, are they similar? I know we say like, oh, you know, they're like CTF, like puzzle hacking competition. But yeah, I'm just kind of curious if you would put it in the same category, if you see it quite different. Yeah, I'd say they're quite similar, but like the only difference kind of is in CTFs, you have to like, you know, get this flag. Now here, there's no flag. You just have to like kind of crack the problem, hack the 
uh, challenge, right? And another difference I'd say is, at least like I thought like these were like, you know, problems for speedrunning, right? So they were, mm. I thought they were kind of easy, right? They're not that <gasps> complicated. And like in CDFs, uh, you usually have like really complicated problems. You spend like, you know, three to five hours on like each of the problems. So yeah, these were like fun little like speedrunnable problems. And they were also like fun. Doing them was fun, right? Nice. Wow. It's pretty funny to hear that you found them easy because mm -hmm. I've always been told by people trying to do this that it's very, very hard. Maybe do you think what made it easy was that you'd like been studying ZK specifically, like or something similar to what we kind of covered in these puzzles? So I guess I found them easy because I had all my cryptographic primitives, right, already. Mm -hmm. And I'd say I also had like experience playing CDF. So, you know. Yeah, that's why I kind of found them easy. And a lot of the times people just like get lost in these concepts. So for example, in the first problem, they mentioned Zcash and they mentioned like cycles of elliptic curves. But if you actually just like open up the problem and like look at the source code, you'd find that you only maybe need to know like how the Arcworks library is like, you know, uh, what's the syntax in Arcworks, how to understand the circuits. You don't really need to know like all these things. You just need to have some basic like cryptography knowledge, like basic elliptic curve knowledge, at least to solve mm -hmm. the first question. So again, like I guess some people would, even including me, I like wasted like first 20 or 15 to 20 minutes just like searching around like cycles of elliptic curves and like Zcash. Uh, I pulled up the Zcash specification and then I was like, let's wait a second. Let's just look at the problem. And when I looked at it, I found that, yeah, I could just understand what the problem was and I spotted the vulnerability and I was able to exploit it. Yeah. Yeah. That was very quick. I guess the difficulty with that puzzle was, you know, working with these cycles and confusing people with like different fields. And it's, it's impressive to figure that out so quickly. Yeah. Even I was like yeah, looking down papers and then mm -hmm. I just said, okay, let's first look at the problem. Then if I need to know something, I'll, I'll dive deep into it. But yeah, I didn't need to. Mm. You came in second on that first puzzle. The first puzzle's name was called Gamma Ray. Um, I, I do think like looking at sort of your rankings, you came in second on the first puzzle, 11th on the second puzzle and seventh on the third puzzle. But that first puzzle, it's it was like, I think the first two. So you yourself in the top were so close mm -hmm. and that the weight we weighted it based on how quickly you solved it from when the first person solved it, right? And uh, I think that made the big difference. So that first puzzle got you over the line. Yeah, right. And and like, that's the thing, because like for the next two problems, I had to look things up, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that the puzzles were fun. Of the three, which one would you say was like the most fun for you? Uh, the most fun? If I talk about fun, I'd say the last puzzle because mm -hmm. it was like really quick and like, for me, it was like the most fun. And was one of them the most challenging or were they all easy and like breeze run through them? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so like they were all like easy, but from like, I'd say for speed running from the perspective of speed mm -hmm. running, I'd say like the second one was kind of the toughest for me because like, you know, uh, like it involved a first of all aggregate signatures, which I like hadn't read about. So if you already knew about it, you had like a head start there. So I had to like kind of like read a bit about it and then like come up with the solution. So, yeah. Mm. What do you think we should do next time that we host a online ZK hack? Is there anything you think we could do better? I mean, I think the problems were fun and like from a speed running perspective, they were kind of good. But uh, I guess maybe we could have like more kind of complex problems because these were like just mm. one single vulnerability and you exploit it, you're done. So maybe we can have like some problems that are like really close to actually auditing some systems, some real systems. So yeah, that'd wow. be cool. Yeah. So chaining different vulnerabilities and yes. getting something more complex out of that. Okay. Yeah. That's a good idea. Thanks. Priyansh, I want to hear a little bit about what you have planned career-wise. So you're now a winner of ZK Hack and this, you know, in our community means people kind of know who you are. Yeah. What are you, what are you thinking of doing next? Are you going to join a team? Are you going to work in this space? Yeah, so I definitely want to work on applied cryptography because that's what I've been like pursuing from like the last three years. But for now, like I'm also like open to, you know, I maybe found a startup in the ZK space. I'm like, maybe I can apply ZK 
and yeah do cool stuff with it it's like zk nice. is pretty cool i think yeah cool do you think you might join us for a, a like the in-person irl hackathons at some point yes i definitely would at some point uh, like i wanted to do like the krakow one but actually like my semester is ending like on 16th and the oh, event no. starts from 17th so that's kind <laughs> oh, of the shoot. problem yeah Aww. otherwise I was, I was gonna attend yeah what is your advice or what would you want to say to the folks who are going to compete next time so first of all you know look at the problem first right don't like jump into looking like there are many things that uh, like they put in the prompt to kind of throw you off right mm -hmm. well it's not really throwing you off it's like good to read all these things but if you're like seriously thinking of speed running the problems you should just first you know look at the problems you, you should follow the top-down approach so uh, try to figure out what like the code is doing and then if you don't know something then kind of read about it so yeah do top down i'd say yeah and that'd be fast if you if you're thinking of speed running it but otherwise it's like good to do bottom up too so you first learn about all the systems and yeah, that's i guess that's a nice learning experience yeah is there a way for people to prepare okay to prepare i guess like most of what you need is the, the primitives right all the primitives that you kind of use in ZK and like most of them basically are your like elliptic curves, I guess, and like other cryptographic primitives. And if you kind of know them, you are, I guess, good to go. But maybe you also need to have some experience with like the system that they have like, you know, written the code. And so, for example, this year they focused on artworks, right? Mm -hmm. So if you already had like uh, experience like writing circuits or like comprehending circuits which are written in artworks, that'd be you know, a good head start. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, I know that in our just previously with Kobe, we were talking about potentially trying it out with different languages in the future. But I do know that we always announce early which language or which libraries we're kind of like using. Yeah. So... That's a good piece of advice, though, for people to maybe read up on that before it all starts. Awesome. Thanks, Priyansh. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And congrats again for ranking. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. So now we're here with our second place winner for ZK Hack 4, Sampriti. Welcome, Sampriti. Hello. And congratulations on coming in second. Thank you. Thank you. I know that you participated actually as a team. I think you're the only mm -hmm. team in the top three. Tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe a little bit about your team. Okay. Uh, hi, so uh, I'm Sampriti again. I'm a, I like to call myself a security researcher, uh, interested in like a wide variety of things. So I like low level things like uh, the security of operating systems and mobile apps, things like that. And then over the last two years, I've been getting into zero knowledge cryptography, as, of course. I started getting into it, like just focusing on learning about ZK. And then I realized, well, there's a good space for getting into security here, like uh, Security is a really important thing here. I mean, so over the last two years, I've been getting into zero knowledge cryptography and I realized like security is really important here because we have all this complicated math protecting maybe like, I don't know, billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really fun to try to apply to my skills here. Um, and yeah, as my team at Zelic, so Zelic is a smart contract security auditing company. And over the last year, we've been also getting into um, like zero knowledge security. Earlier, they were mostly focused on like blockchain. So mm -hmm. like Solidity, Solana, things like that. So yeah, as part of Zelic, we do uh, uh, circuit audits. So things like the scroll ZK EVM, for example, um, I was part of the audits for the circuits for the ZK EVM and also Axioms. Uh, ZK coprocessor. So those were some really oh, interesting cool. audits and we found a lot of cool bugs there. And yeah, that's my background. Nice. Sounds like a very good position to be coming into ZK Hack with because the ZK yeah. Hack online, because you're, you know, in these competitions, you're looking for the bug. And I guess that's what you do kind of every day. Yeah. Is this the first time you participated in ZK Hack? Um, I think last year uh, I looked at the challenges, uh, but I wasn't, uh, I didn't have time to do it at that time. So I think this is the first time I'm properly like, you know, coming in at 11 a.m. PST when the challenges <laughs> are released, uh, like everything blocked out and trying to get it solved as quickly as possible. So, yeah, I guess this is the first time I'm actually trying to win. Mm. Nice. Did you find it to be very time consuming? Um. 
I think uh, we solved most of the challenges under like one and a half hour. I think all mm-hmm. three of the challenges we solved under one and a half hour. So I guess it wasn't too time consuming in that way, uh, at least compared to, for example, I do these capture the flag competitions mm-hmm. uh, in general. And um, sometimes the cryptography challenges there uh, might take like uh, the entire day, like 24 hours mm-hmm. uh, because there's like, uh, I don't know, you have to read like three, four papers and try to understand attacks and implement them. So compared to that, I think these challenges were much more self-contained. So it wasn't it wasn't mm. too bad. You're the second person to mention that having done a lot of CTFs, that these yeah. were kind of faster. <laughs> you are also the winners, though. So we know that there's a lot of mm-hmm. people that did take a few days to actually solve these puzzles. But yeah, that's cool to hear. How would you compare these ZK hack puzzles to like CTFs? I I think the ZK hack puzzles, I feel like the bug was sometimes more in the code, uh, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. A lot of the cryptographic CTF puzzles that we look at, for example, they might be like some custom scheme uh, Mm -hmm. and you kind of have to figure out like an issue with like it's it's more in the math uh, is is kind Mm -hmm. of what I'm trying to say. and I, I think those might be a little bit more math heavy sometimes and require a knowledge of like a lot of the existing attacks that you've done uh, that have, have been performed on like those crypto systems before. So as an example, a, a very common type of challenge in CTFs is you have to break some insecure like RSA scheme, right? Like uh, let's say the the key is generated in an insecure way and a lot of the background knowledge you need to know about of like LLL attacks. Uh, so these are like lattice reduction algorithms uh, that are used to solve these kind of challenges. So I think there's a lot of background knowledge of the what has happened in the past that you need to know to solve those challenges. On, on the other hand, for ZK hash challenges, I felt like if you had a basic understanding of elliptic curve cryptography and pairings, uh, you could kind of just look at it self-contained and try to solve that. I think which was somewhat nicer in a way, like it's better for someone who is maybe beginner to approach approach these mm. challenges. Nice. I checked out your rankings over the three puzzles. So Zelik as a team came in first on puzzle one, sixth on puzzle two, and then second on puzzle three. Yeah, just looking back over those, what was the puzzle that stands out to you? I think the second puzzle was definitely my favorite. Um, okay. Two reasons for that. One was it was like you had to kind of understand this, these two kind of schemes. So obviously the BLS signatures and like the security properties and then also like the proof of knowledge uh, paper. So I had to actually go and read and understand the security properties of proof of knowledge scheme and try to figure out like, OK, wh- wh- what is this scheme doing that maybe like a good proof of knowledge scheme should should not be doing and mm-hmm. something like that. So. I think that was definitely a standout. And also the solution was kind of like you had the proof of knowledge of all the other participants and you were supposed to combine them in a way to get a new proof of knowledge uh, proof for your invalid key. Right. And it was kind of like staring at our eyes, but uh, but like we didn't realize it for a while. Like we're just looking like, how do we get this new information that we don't have? And it's like, oh, we already have all of these other proofs. We just need to combine them in a particular way. So I think that was definitely one of my favorites. I was also like, uh, kind of fun because uh, we were challenging to like use arc works in that yeah. uh, like a- all of us in our team like a lot of the time was spent trying to like struggle with rust and arc works mm-hmm. like I remember I spent like 10 minutes trying to figure out how to like do the inverse mod in one yeah. challenge yeah. Um, and it was like oh I just didn't do a user trait uh, yeah. and like I was calling the inverse mod function but it says the compiler said it didn't work and it turned out like oh I just had to use a trait so that was kind of a, a, a challenging part of doing ZK hack, I think, for me. Did you do everything in Rust? Or so I know with some of the earlier puzzles, people used to print out stuff from Rust, do some calculations <laughs> in Sage and bring it back to Rust and use that as their attack. So I would I would actually verify my attack in Sage first. Uh, mm-hmm. to make sure it works. And once it did work, I was like, well I have to implement this in uh, Rust now because I have to like send the code to you. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess troubleshooting, right? Make sure yeah. your solution works and then it's just about Rust. Yeah. Fair. 
Um, I would say uh, one of our team members is a, like a Rust expert. So I think uh, he, uh, we just ask him like, oh, what's going wrong here or how to do this? Um, and he would be pretty helpful. So I think that's a one good thing about being in a team. I would definitely, if I was solo, I would spend, I would have spent more time like just struggling on those things. Yeah. I actually wanted to ask you a bit about the team like set up, were you all trying to hack on the puzzle at the same time? Or was it sort of you were taking the lead and then relying on the others to just kind of help you out? So the team was uh, four of us. So it was me, Sampriti, and then uh, Avi, Malte, and uh, Mohit. Uh, so we are four of us. I think we would start on the puzzle just like we'd spend maybe like 10, 15 minutes trying to read it on our own. And then we would like start bouncing off ideas of each other maybe uh, for a while. And then at some point, one of us uh, would like realize the solution. Uh, for some of these, it wasn't as obvious. Like the second challenge, it's like you have two stages, right? First, you try to mm. break the BLS signature. And then second, you try to break the proof of knowledge scheme. So yeah, we would like slowly get to the attack. And then once it's the implementation stage, I guess all of us would just try to be the fastest to submit uh, because of the time constraint. I think it doesn't make sense to try to like share code. It's like, well, good luck. Whoever finishes first, just submit on your GitHub account. <laughs> nice. What do you think we should do different for the future ZK hack online puzzles? I think the number one thing all of us wanted was more puzzles. <laughs> like we <laughs> More puzzles. Okay. <laughs> The other thing was we would have liked the puzzles to be a little bit more time taking and more challenging, mm -hmm. I think. I think they were challenging, but because you, I, I'm guessing you tried to keep the puzzles self-contained, it was like you couldn't make them as hard as you'd wanted to. I'm going back to one of the things I brought up in the CTF point is like we would look at like attacks from the past, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like some common attacks, like maybe attacks on elliptical pairings, uh, those kind of things. So it, I'm, I'm sure that is like increases the difficulty a lot, but I think it also increases like how much you learn from doing these challenges to mm -hmm. tr try to understand like the academics behind these. So I think that is something we would definitely uh, appreciate a, a more if that happened in the future. I haven't done the previous challenges, so I don't know if how how much this existed in the uh, in the past. But this was just going yeah. off the challenges from this year. I was about to ask you that because we have this page full of the previous puzzles, and Kobe's not on here. Kobe was designing for basically all of those, um, but I'll add this in the show notes for anyone who wants to take a peek, and also you, Sam PT, if you want to have a look at uh, the previous ones. But this is great feedback for us. You know, we're always trying to kind of no, make ZK Hack better. So this is great. Uh, it's funny because ZK Hack also has this. So it is kind of Kobe's brainchild in some way, like these puzzles. Yeah. The spirit behind like the early ZK Hack puzzles, at least, were to be very practical. So a bit further away from papers and like, oh, yes, these classic crypto attacks and more into like, hey, here is a subtle mistake that's kind of hard to find. But also you'll learn from if you find it. Mm. I'm sure we can find a way to marry both of these. Nice. Yeah, I was thinking of something like, oh, I implemented a new scheme similar to Plonk, but mm -hmm. oh, we made a mistake in like the Fiat Shamir process and try to break it. So it's it's kind of novel, but also like somewhat similar to like existing attacks. So it's not like you can just pull a attack from like, I don't know, the frozen heart blog and just use it, but you still have to like make it up on your own. Hmm. I sort of wish Kobe was here too, because he might have had that thought or we may have already done that, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> so I know definitely Kobe has some stuff about, for example, um, trusted setups. What happens if someone keeps the toxic waste? And he has, I think, a whole article about how to make fake proofs in that case. Yeah. Um, I know that we discussed like Fiat Shamir because there are so many bugs that arise from Fiat Shamir, but we almost felt like is this too obvious? Are people going to find it too quickly? <laughs> and that's why we didn't go for something like that. But yeah, maybe another time you can have uh, Kobe and Andrea go through their, their process and explain how they came up with the puzzles. Yeah. What's next for Zelic, the company? So you're doing audits and you're moving into the ZK space where it sounds like you've moved into the ZK space. Are there any tools or anything that you'd be building on your side? Like I know there's other auditing firms that are like exploring formal verification and stuff like that. So we have a couple of people who already work on formal verification on the Solidity side, uh, for example, for smart contracts uh, in value testing. Uh, but also for ZK, we have an internal project where we are trying to understand how we can formally verify circuits which are made in Halo 2, for example, which mm -hmm. might not be as straightforward because they're, you know, laid, laid out in a table instead of like a 
formal language like in Circom. Mm. So yeah, those are some of the things we're looking at. Uh, we're also looking into moving into new cryptographic algorithms. So a lot of companies are using MPC to build MPC wallets or other forms of uh, uh, technologies like machine learning using MPC. So, and often these are like custom or novel cryptographic schemes, which might need like closer inspection, obviously, because it's never good to roll your own crypto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, those are some of the other things we're also trying, looking to move into. Nice. We asked this also to the previous participant, but what would your advice be to folks who want to compete in the next UK hack puzzles? I think I would say to go look at CTFs. That's how I got started. That's how a lot of my friends got started. Um, in fact, there's this amazing website called CryptoHack, uh, which has a lot of like cryptographic puzzles starting from a very beginner level. Like you start breaking Caesar ciphers and XR mm -hmm. ciphers and going all the way to you break like ring LWV and like lattice page schemes. So I think that's actually if you try to like solve the challenges from zero to 100, it's like a formal education in cryptography almost <laughs> wow. uh, with all the papers you have to read and all the attacks you want to understand. And once you finish that, I feel like it's pretty easy to get into zero knowledge cryptography, read the papers, try to understand the attacks. On the other hand, if you're not too interested in the math side of it, of course, there's a lot of like circom circuits where you can just think of it as like a programming language, right? It's just reading code. You don't really need to understand too much math beyond uh, modular arithmetic. And I think that's another way to get into zero knowledge cryptography. Mm. Uh, so there's like two avenues, either you go the math side or you go the programming side. But what about for the next ZK hack participants, the puzzle hackers? Oh, the puzzle hackers. Yeah, I would say crypto hack and uh, uh, because I, I think those CTF challenges are pretty similar. Nice. Um, and yeah, like, I guess tr try the ZK hack puzzles from the past, which I need to do because I haven't <laughs> tried all of them yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. All right. Thank you so much, Samfriti, for coming on. And congratulations on being second at ZK hack four. Yeah, congrats. Thank you so much. We are now here with our first place winner for ZK Hack 4, Nicola Yos. He's also known as Neos Ledger on our leaderboard. Welcome to the show, Nicola. Thank you. Welcome from one Nico to another. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's two Nicos on this on this one, so <laughs> uh, we'll have to clarify. Yeah. Nicola, this is your second time coming in first place on a ZK Hack competition. And I know you did at least one other ZK hack um, because I saw you came in second, I think, on the first one we ever did. Did you also do the ZK hack mini or was that the one you skipped? Yes, I also participated, uh, but only with the first challenge uh, mm. because actually oh. with the second one, uh, I had to travel to the other side of the world. Uh, so I wasn't able to, to compete. All right, to give oh, people no. a chance, I understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. But so you've done all four ZK hacks. Yeah, actually, with the first one, it's thanks to the first one that I discovered uh, the world of zero knowledge. <gasps> uh, at that oh, time, wow. it was uh, a colleague from my work who said, hey, there is this new CTF event uh, with zero knowledge. It's, uh, it, it sounds amazing. Uh, so uh, it was actually the first ZK hack uh, event. Wow. And uh, so I was like, uh, oh, it sounds very interesting. It's uh, new stuff. And uh, let's learn about this. Damn. You came in second on the overall picture, but I'm guessing like the first puzzle you would have had to like do a lot of background reading to be able to get into it. Well, uh, I'm already quite knowledgeable about applied cryptography. So mm -hmm. I already uh -huh. knew a lot of things and I already wrote uh, some Rust uh, a lot. So I uh, had a bit of background, but n not okay. in the own knowledge, but it's, it was like quite easy uh, in a way to, <laughs> to, to, to join the puzzle as well. It's, okay. Maybe easy <laughs> nice. is not the right word, but it's, um, I, I don't come from uh, nowhere. Actually, Nicolas, I'm curious about um, your background now that you mention it. And since we're both French and I know Anna speaks some French. I do. How about we Je conduct some français. of this in French? <laughs> Yeah, Test we're going to switch. Anna. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> du coup, Nicolas, d'où viens-tu? Quel est ton, ton background? Alors, euh, bah, je viens du milieu de la sécurité informatique, okay. euh, dans laquelle euh, j'ai commencé à travailler en France à l'Agence nationale de sécurité des systèmes d'information, mm -hmm. euh, dans laquelle euh, mon boulot, en quelque sorte, c'était de 
revoir euh, des logiciels, des configurations réseau, etc. Et entre autres, euh, des implémentations sans cryptographique okay. euh, pour euh, des administrations, des grandes entreprises, etc. Euh, et ensuite, euh, bah, j'ai voulu euh, continuer dans cette voie où j'ai rejoint euh, Ledger en 2020. Ouais, euh, pour Ledger. travailler dans l'équipe sécurité de Ledger, euh, pour, euh, entre autres, sur des sujets de cryptographie. Et donc ça, c'était avant ZK Hack 1 ou c'était après C'est ça, c'était tout ça avant ZK Hack, j'ai rejoint Ledger en 2020. Ok. Et ensuite, euh, quelques mois après, il y a, a quelqu'un euh, dans mes collègues qui m'a parlé de ZK Hack, euh, qui m'a dit <rire> que c'était... Euh, enfin, c'est bien ça. Euh, ça semblait très <rire> bien, enfin, c'était la première édition, c'était en train euh, d'être uh -huh. euh, monté, etc. Du coup, j'ai participé et... Et ouais. j'ai appris beaucoup de choses à ce moment-là. J'ai commencé à lire des articles sur Zero Knowledge, à mieux comprendre comment ça fonctionnait. Avant, j'avais déjà regardé Monero avec mm -hmm. euh, l'épreuve Bulletproof. Ouais. Mais euh, c'était, euh, j'étais pas allé trop dans le détail. Okay. Et puis une anecdote, c'est quand je suis arrivé à Ledger dans mon entretien d'embauche, il y a le CTO qui m'a demandé si je connaissais le Zero Knowledge. Et ah. je lui ai dit non. <rire> du coup, euh, un peu parlé, et si, 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 si. bref, ça n'a pas empêché euh, d'être embauché, mais si, si j'avais répondu oui, peut-être ça aurait été encore un plus. Euh. Ouais. Eh bien, merci à tous de nous avoir suivis dans Zero Knowledge Podcast. Non <rire> ça sonne très drôle de l'entendre en français. Yeah, All I just right. wanted to Thank say you. it in French. <laughs> okay, Thank to you, our yeah. listeners who don't speak French, we're going to switch back for you now, but... To anyone who speaks English and French, you've just gotten some insight into Nicolas's background uh, working at Ledger. And so I guess this is le the Ledger Ledger, like the Ledger we all know and love, right? Yes. Is Ledger going to use ZK on some level? Uh, actually, I don't know. Um, <laughs> there, there have been some projects, but it's like some proof of concept, so on, so on. Okay, so I'm okay. pretty familiar with... Uh, Uh, the concept uh, we are working with blockchains which are using uh, zero knowledge yes uh, obviously i don't have any idea if there are products uh, who really use uh, zero knowledge mm -hmm. got it so let's bring it back to um the zk hack 4 and the actual event that we just wrapped up so you know as mentioned you would come in first for zk hack 3 And I think you got all the prizes for that. Come ZK Hack 4, Puzzle 1, you actually came in third place for Puzzle 1. For Puzzle 2, you came in second place. And then for Puzzle 3, you came in first place. <laughs> so it's just kind of like a steady step up, up. Yeah. ramping up for you. It's, yes. <laughs> in fact, the, the difficult part is that uh, now I have a, a boy uh, mm. who was uh, two months old. So... Oh, wow. oh. Uh, in the evenings, I also needed to take care of him, and that's why uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I needed uh, more time in some challenges. Yeah. Clearly didn't stop you. <laughs> Clearly wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> so one hand you were holding a baby, the other hand you were breaking puzzles for ZK Hack, I'm guessing. And that's why in the third one, I think uh, it took 15 minutes or something. Wow. Uh, yeah. To, to, to write because it was like uh, a bright uh, when my son was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfectly timed. Nice. So that's what Very happened. Cool. Over the course of three weeks, you changed your son's sleep schedule to be exactly at the time of the release. <laughs> And let's go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Um, We've actually just interviewed the other two winners, so the third and second place. And one of the things we wanted to understand from them was like, how did you find each of the puzzles? Were any of them extra easy? Were any of them extra challenging? Yeah, how did you find these three? From my perspective, they uh, were easier than the previous ones. Mm. Uh. Um, but at the same time, it's because I already have a background. For example, I already know uh, what the BLS 12 Uh, 381 uh, 12 R. Uh, I already used artworks a lot. Uh, yeah. So I heard that some participants were struggling with the type system of uh, artworks library. Mm -hmm. And well, I already used it in the previous editions. So mm -hmm. uh, it was easier for me, I guess. Yeah. Nice. That's actually really good feedback, though, to hear that you found the previous ZK Hack puzzles harder. And you think part part of it might be because you are familiar with the material now. 
what could we actually do for future ZK hacks that you think could actually challenge you, like someone at your level? That's a good question. Uh, uh, in the ZTH Mini, I guess there, there was a really hard challenge, which I didn't manage to solve, uh, about the Winterfell mm -hmm. uh, implementation, ah. where uh, the aim was to reach cheat uh, the verifier. Uh, because the uh, uh, proving system was using very weak parameters, and it was actually quite difficult to check mm. in the right way mm -hmm. uh, the verifier. Uh, so this is the kind of things which is harder, I would yeah. say. Do you think using a different language would make this more challenging for you, actually? Like we using Arcworks, we've used Arcworks for ZK Hack 1 and ZK Hack 3 and ZK Hack 4. And the one you said was really challenging was the one where we used Winterfell, I think. Well, actually, I don't know, uh, because at work, I'm really used to switch to different contexts mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to, to really discover new contexts in, in a fast way. So I don't know whether it will add some additional challenge or it will only make it harder for overall participants. I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right. Maybe let's throw the question back to you then. So what would what should we do? If not language, what would be another way? Maybe uh, something focused on implementation. Uh, for example, um, yeah. right now I'm participating in uh, another CTF, uh, which is uh, focused on post-quantum cryptography. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges is to implement TLS extension to support post-quantum cryptography in TLS uh, in a way which is uh, easy, in a, which is doable not easy, mm -hmm. but doable as a CTF challenge. And uh, I found it quite different from the usual challenges which require breaking things. So maybe a challenge which focuses on implementing uh, or adding some ZK thing to an existing uh, protocol or solution or software and evaluating that uh, the integration of the ZK protocol uh, was done right. Or maybe a second thing is uh, to instead of trying to break something, uh, taking something which is broken and trying to fix it. Fix it. Yeah. Fix it. And ways to, yeah. <laughs> to, to fix broken implementations. That's hmm. cool. That's a neat idea. So you mentioned uh, you're participating in another CTF right now. Do you do a lot of those? Not much uh, now that I have a boy. Uh, but, uh, well, in the past, I did several uh, CTFs um, for, in several domains. I would say, for example, uh, several years ago, I participated in, in a CTF uh, related to satellites, which was organi organized by the US Air Force, uh, called uh, Hatch a Sat. <laughs> uh, and so it was a, a really nice CTF also to, to discover all the technologies around satellites, yeah. uh, communications, and, and the objective uh, of this CTF was to uh, make uh, people from both the physics uh, of making satellites actually work and people from a cyber security uh, work together. Mm. And I think it, it's the same thing with ZK Hatch to, to make people from the zero knowledge world yeah. and people from uh, the, the cyber security or whatever we call it meet to, to have systems which are more robust, more secure in the end. For sure. Have you ever designed a CTF? Like we heard from a previous interviewee that there's like a really awesome ledger CTF kind of yes. going and on. I participated uh, it in the two last editions. Okay. Actually, uh, because there were several editions. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, uh, for example, in one of them, there was um, a challenge for trust on the EOS blockchain. Uh, mm -hmm. EOS. Oh, yeah, unrelated EOS. to your name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a network blockchain, and uh, there, there was uh, uh, something interesting uh, related to the way the smart contracts on this blockchain work. So I did a CTF challenge out of it. So, you, but you didn't design the CTF for Ledger, did you? I participated. It. Uh, it was a, a team effort. Okay. okay, but wait, did you make it or did you did you hack it? That's what I'm I trying to figure it, out. Uh, you with, made uh, it. Okay. Made it. Yes. Okay, okay, this is yeah, what I was uh, thinking. The Ledger CTF <laughs> is uh, the making challenges for others. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Well, also, in, in, in France, uh, there is a famous security conference called the STIC, uh, S-S-T-I-C, mm -hmm. um, which is a cybersecurity conference, 
which is well known for Hard Challenge, uh, ah. which is released ahead of uh, the conference. Okay. Uh, I also participated in uh, creating this challenge three times. Oh, wow. So you, you're a hack builder almost. Um, I wonder if we should at some point pick your mind for for a new competitor, <laughs> or maybe you want to maybe join the the building yeah. team. You've you've won twice. I'm kind of like, do we try to com- do we try to create something that like Nicolas finds hard, or does Nicolas join us <laughs> to make a harder puzzle? <laughs> yeah, that's a, also a way of solving this issue. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Actually, for the stick competition, it's uh, traditional that the winner. Uh, mates the challenge for you after mm. amazing hey this is so cool this is a great thing to i'm gonna we, i think we should bring all of this feedback back to kobe and yeah, see what definitely. he thinks nicolas what's next for you just in general uh i know you're you're working at ledger but are you also i mean i guess you're going to be doing more ctfs but is there anything else that you're into would you eventually maybe work in zk you think is it interesting enough Maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really don't know, uh, because right now I'm enjoying my work at Ledger. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I can work on very different topics, uh, and, uh, including ZK, but it's like, uh, right now, uh, ZK is like a research field where there's yeah. not much uh, uh, in Ledger about uh, ZK, but uh, we are trying to, to see what we can build with it. Mm. And besides that, uh, I don't really know what the future will be. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for coming on and uh, Mm -hmm. congratulations once again for coming in first place once again. And I really (laughs) like your idea of potentially bringing you over to our side for the upcoming ones. Yeah, you might have some really good ideas here that we could implement. So before we we wrap up this episode, I just want to say a massive thank you again to the ZK Hack team who put this event together. It was Kobe and Gaylord, Agni, Rachel, and Hector who worked on this edition of ZK Hack 4. I also want to say a quick shout out to the runners up who didn't get a chance to come on the show to talk about their experience, but we had Ramada, BK Moves, Alfi, Baby Step Forward, Giant Step Backwards, and Nix TR. Uh, Nix TR, I think, had come in second last time. So anyway, thanks to all the participants, uh, all the hackers, and all of the folks who also came out to our workshops, the partners that we had, Risk Zero and Polygon, uh, Geometry as the, as the puzzle builders, and ZKV, who sponsored the prizes for this one. Yeah. Oh, I have one last thing I wanted to say before I sign off. I think I mentioned this earlier in the show, but there's an upcoming IRL ZK hack hackathon happening in Krakow on May 17th through 19th. Anyone who participated, obviously, in the online, please come check out our hackathon. It's very different. It's more, much more about building and less about breaking stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I hope, I hope we get to see you again, Nicolas, at future events. And congrats again. Thank you. Thanks, Nico. Pleasure. And I want to say thank you to the podcast team, Rachel, Henrik, and Tanya, and to our listeners. Thanks for listening. 